Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. from this bottle of balm. Are you in trouble? A negligible amount. Well, waiting out here for help in the middle of nowhere, you could sit there the rest of your life. I figured someone would pass by this rock, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Next mule I have will drink only water. What? My drunken mule died of delirium tremens. <laughs> <laughs> by sheer force of sinew, I towed that wagon three miles, and then the wheel broke. What'd you do then? I selected a large branch, and I beat that wagon within an inch of its life. Well, that makes sense. What are you going to do now? Finish this bottle of balm. <laughs> and then I may select a larger branch and continue to beat that wagon, or I may get some smaller branches and make some new spokes. Stand back. I'm going to lower my law bridge. Stand back. Son, no assistance required. <laughs> I'm Lucas McCain, mister. This is my son, Mark. Winslow Quince is the name. Sign painting is the game. Hello, Mr. Quince. Mm. We better take a look at your wagon. You took some words right out of my mouth. <laughs> This weight is what broke your wheel. Those are my spares. I figure whenever a tire iron wears through, I just fit one of them on. All I got to do is figure out how to bend it around and then stick them together. Where'd you get them? Found them out in the wilderness. Well, these are railroad tracks. You better give them back to the railroad. Railroads run on those bits of iron. Great Scott, I thought I'd found a mother load. But uh, let's talk about you. What are you going to do about my wagon? Well, first, I'm going to get me a great big tree branch. Won't work. I've tried it. It'll work my way. Come huh? on, son. Uh, Mr. Quinn's? Mm -hmm. You ride all around the country, not even armed? Unarmed? Oh, of course I'm armed. Armed like a one-man army, a veritable fortress, a light brigade. Why, challenging Winslow Quince is tantamount to setting a sun on the British Empire. Not a man for handguns, but for a rifle, deadlier, accurate, harder to find. Ah. <laughs> Here's me trusty foul in peace. The devil's gone into business for itself. What are you doing? This instrument has a hair trigger. Well, you better put it away. You'll spook this horse right out from underneath me. Shattering experience. On a day when I'm particularly sensitive to noise. You ought to be careful about handling those guns, Mr. Quinn. You've got a point. Say, son, would you uh, slither back into the wagon and get me another bottle of bomb? Right in the back, just inside the tailgate net box. Yes, sir. This side of Gilead. Why, uh, Mr. Quince, that's just whiskey. Mm. 
Don't you be misled by the label, boy. I just put that on the bottles of bomb to fool the patent thieves who are after the formula. <laughs> well, the way you make a face each time you take a dose, it doesn't look too good tasting. Horrible. Absolutely ghastly. Well, then what's it good for? <sighs> the epizootic chillblains, moist vapors, and the galloping clangs. Uh, is any of that catching? Not until you're old enough for the bomb. <sighs> Proceed. Mr. McCain, you have been a friend in need, my need. Well, I wouldn't leave anybody sitting in that rock. Let it be of help. As a gesture of my appreciation, I'd like you to accept this pocket watch left me by my great granddaddy. Oh, thank you. You don't owe me a thing. You're a true gentleman. I won't insult you by offering you any money. Of course not. However, I have here a little something for your son. It will. Now, these genuine silver-plated spurs were worn by General Robert E. Lee at the Boston Tea Party. For your son, Mark. It's kind of you, Mr. Quince. I never use them, never straddle a horse. They were left me by my great, great granddaddy. I tell you, Mark won't waste these on horses. I'm sure you'll save them for barn dances. Couldn't put them to better use. No. Goodbye, Mr. Quince. <laughs> and a good day to you, Sirrah. Sirrah. Goodbye, boy. Bye, Mr. Quince. <laughs> Lose a horse? No. Found a wagon. Not much good without a horse. I'll trade you the wagon for two horses. We might give you one horse. I haven't got a saddle. What in the world would you do with two horses? Trade you one horse for a new wheel mounted right here on this wagon. But I'd own the wagon. Well, if I rode out of here with my horse pulling my wheel and your wagon happened to come along, I couldn't help that, could I? Say, if you've got any money, I'm going to enjoy doing business with you. I have a group of gold coins as long as your nose. Well, welcome to my parlor, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas boy, Mark. Hello, Micah. How's your trip? Pretty dull, Micah. Although we got top price for our 20 head. Well, while you two have been dudin' it up in a big city, we had uh, some pretty good action right in this neck of the woods. Oh, what happened? Here, here this just come in. Know any of those people? No, I don't think so. Who are they? Well, what concerns me more is where they were. Richard Tucker was a wealthy ranch about 100 miles north of here. He was bushwhacked. They took his watch and money. The woman was killed about 15 miles closer. They robbed her of a lady's locket watch. Murdering a woman just to rob her. Shepson was mending fences on foot. He was unarmed. Didn't have two dimes to rub together. They shot him in the back just for his boots. The only thing he had on him of any value. Sounds like the murderer is working his way toward North Fork. He's closer than that. Curtis and Barnes were working on the railroad gang, laying track. They were unarmed. They were paid off in newly minted coins and were on their way to North Fork to let off a little steam. That's less than 15 miles outside of town, Mike. I don't suppose you met any strangers along the trail. The killer was known to travel right over the route. Well, we did run into a stranger, but I can guarantee you he didn't kill anything more than a bottle. We did see Matt Larson, though, when we hit Santa Fe. Matt Larson? I didn't know he was back in the territory. I'll have to send out a wire on him. Say, if he's the killer and turns up around here, I hope I can hold the people back long enough for a trial. That's all they've been talking about lately. How about this stranger you said you met? A peddler named Quince. Like I said, he's no threat to anybody. Well, I'll send out that wire on Larson and buy you a beer. Would you water the horses, son? Sure, Paul. It appears to be satisfactory. Now, let's see. The agreed-on price was uh, $20. Uh, the agreed-on uh, price was $30? Twenty for the wheel, ten for the horse. Who? Oh, yes, yes, how forgetful of me. Now, in return, I shall paint you a nice thirty-dollar sign. I see it in new Gothic, or perhaps old. I English don't watch. need a sign. Oh, well, then. Very well. Come with me. <laughs> I have here a selection of perfectly straight, high-grade iron. That's railroad steel. It can be cut into small portions and curled into horseshoes. Horseshoes I've got. Money I haven't. Thirty dollars cash. Here's your money. 
in gold. It will never bring you happiness, not if I have anything to say about it. 10, 20, 30. Who oh, uh, you wouldn't consider double or nothing? Something on your mind? Not exactly. Paul, well, those rails in Mr. Quincy's wagon, he must have been pretty close to the railroad. The railroad runs pretty close to the trail. And these spurs. Michael was saying that that fence mender didn't have anything except in a pair of boots. He must have been wearing spurs. Everybody on the range wears spurs, Mark. Yeah, but well, you know that gun that he showed us, the one that went off? Mm -hmm. Well, there's another gun in that wagon. I saw it. It's a handgun, Paul. Mark, do you think Mr. Quince is a killer? Well, he could be. He was there. Well, so were we. Yeah, yeah, but he had a reason, Paul. Why, well, there was all that money. Well, you're a pretty close man with a dollar yourself. But why wouldn't he... Why wouldn't he tell us anything about that extra gun? Yeah, maybe he heard about the killings. Maybe he was thinking the same things about us that you're thinking about him. Ah, uh, do we look like a couple of bushwhackers? The bushwhackers don't often look like bushwhackers, Mark. Now, come on, a few railroad tracks, a spurs, a gun, they're all circumstantial, nothing really positive. And if there's no positive evidence, you've got to look at the accused man. You've got to say to yourself, is he the kind of a man who'd really do this? Now, you look at Mr. Quince that way and forget the evidence. What do you really think about him? Well, like you said, Paul, he doesn't look much like a bushwhacker. You mean that's one more piece of evidence against him? I'm just repeating your words. country folk as the makers of bomb. County Cork bomb is the finest bomb in all the land, all the world. Ah, then it's here to reminisce you are. What's here to rent a room I am? I see a sweet little something with a nice vista, something overlooking the cost. Well, there's the presidential suite at two dollars a day. I'll take it. A week will be fine. In advance. I see it all now. Across the front of your charming establishment, a $14 sign. Ah, oh, the sign outside's only been there two months. Gotta be $14. A penurious population, this lady's pocket watch, is worth in excess of $20, yours for a week's lodging. Hmm? Six dollars, three days. So you doubt the integrity of Winslow Quince? Well, feast your eyes on this genuine 21 jewel pocket chronometer. A family heirloom worth at least $20. Hmm? $8, $6, $14. Well, that'll make out your week. Tell me one thing, Mr. Quince. Where did you come by this watch? That watch was left me by a very wealthy gentleman who roomed with my parents. And what does the RT stand for? Rich tenant. I, um, I suppose you'll be wanting to see your accommodation. All in good time. Could you direct me first to the local vintner? That is, the nearest bomb constructor? Well, if you'd be having your bomb a glass at a time, we serve gentlemen here. I want to buy it in quantity. It is better to have more and uh, not need than to have less and want. Well, there's Swinney Saloon right down the street. I go, but I shall return. <laughs> Welcome home. Uh, it's good to be back with all that trouble off the trail. Don't tell me you were worried about me. It was the bushwhacker I was worried about. And were there any pretty Colleen's about in the city? I don't know, but Mark said there were quite a few. Notice anything new? 
Where'd you get that? I did it myself. You a watchmaker now? I'm talking about my new hairdo. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that locket watch. Oh, Mr. Quince gave it to me for a week's lodging. Why, is there anything wrong? I don't know. But why don't you look where you're going? I make it a point of looking directly at the object towards which I am heading with... Oh, <laughs> sorry, Marshal. Didn't notice the little twinkler. <laughs> Just a minute. Are you the man that rode in with Lucas McCain a while ago? Fine young man, both of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see now what he meant. Huh? You intend to tack that up without the use of a hammer? I do. Why don't you use the butt of your gun? Last time I tried that, the walnut grips come off. I was unarmed for two days. Why not use a rock? Instead of a hammer? Instead of a gun? It was quite a mix-up. The red men scalped my horse, stole me, and massacred the cavalry. I had to cut my way through a writhing wall of Apaches with nothing but a paring knife. I expected I'd better have a keg of this bomb, too. What kind is it? Red-eye bomb. Red-eye. Well, I expected the largest sense bomb is bomb. What's the tote? Fifty-eight dollars. Fifty. I can see it now. You can see what now? A $58 sign across the front of this business establishment in Roman style. No, 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 no. I think a fine cursive italic North Fork saloon. I'll get the paint. I've got a sign. This is a cash deal. I've never run into such a money-grubbing community and one that doubted the power of advertising. I have here a genuine gent's diamond ring worth in excess of $100. <laughs> Take it to your local jeweler, if you don't believe me. I'll mind the store for you. Richard Tucker, murdered, known to be missing a watch and a diamond ring. Alice Dawn, murdered, known to be missing a lady's locket watch. Chubb Shebson, murdered, known to be missing a pair of boots and probably the spurs that go with them. Now, you belatedly tell me he had railroad steel, a six-gun, and newly minted coins. These people were all murdered by a six-gun. And he must have been near a railhead to get that steel. Oh, I know we've got all kinds of evidence against him. Too much, in fact. I just can't put the man together as a murderer, Mike. I still think you should be looking for Matt Larson. Lucas, must you always be so right that you'll overlook a whole multitude of wrongs just to be sure? It's not a question of me being right, it's all of us being right. Now, you arrest him for those murders the way you say people feel. What kind of a hearing is he going to get? They didn't make just one locket watch and stop. And watches bearing the initials RT, and the diamond ring he gave Sweeney, the spurs he gave Mark, what about those? Well, that's just it. Now, why would he come to a place not 15 miles from where he committed the murder and start throwing evidence all over town? Could be. He thought he'd get here ahead of the news. He took one of these posters off my bulletin board to keep it from becoming public knowledge. Mike is right. He planned to be away from here before the facts caught up with him. Well, Lucas, I guess you want him to ride out scot-free. Oh, I didn't say that, Mike. But the way you're talking, there's no need for a hearing or a trial. You might as well hang him. Ah, good afternoon, Marshal. Miss, and you, Mr. McCain. <laughs> it warms my heart to see such a gathering representative of the local citizenry. I see you've collected the trinkets. I suggest that you retain them. I have every reason to believe that they may constitute very important legal evidence. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about it, Mr. Quince, because that puts us all in complete agreement. Hmm? Now, would you like to make a statement? I certainly would. Remove your hands from my body. What is the meaning of this? You're under arrest. Upon what charge? Murder. I did not kill that man. What man? I am not at liberty to divulge what man I did not kill. I will speak only in the presence of my barrister. Show me to my room. I 
I give up. You talk to him, Lucas. Now, Quince, I don't happen to believe you're guilty, but you're sure making it hard to prove my point. Mr. McCain. Why you? If I... Why you come here? If I confide in you, McCain, will you promise to turn over to me any monies that may be forthcoming from this information? Agreed. All right. I know all about the bushwhacker. You know all about the bushwhacker. Hey, Lucas, Lucas. Fired here just come in with Matt Larson's body. He found the wallets of two of the murder victims on him, so I guess that clears it up. Larson was the bushwhacker. He said your money or your life, and that's when I decided to shoot him. Oh, that gentleman is a brazen liar. I personally dispatched that rogue. You didn't even see the body. How do you know? Why, well, I discovered those two wallets when I went through the pockets of the bushwhacker. I didn't know who he was then. So you shot him? No, sir. I was unable to find my fowling piece in time. Well, if you didn't shoot him, how'd you kill him? And how'd he explain that bullet hole in him? He rode into my camp, attempting to burglarize me. Well, some time back, the lock on my strong box rusted away, and I put a tiny little rattlesnake inside, sort of as a sentry. Friendly little fella, unless riled. Well, the blackguard thrust his hand inside, and the little chap took a nibble right in a vein. We discussed it until he died. I then did lift certain of his personal effects in order to lighten his load to the happy hunting ground. And two miles from that spot, a wheel departed my wagon. And that gentleman there is a knave. That ain't the truth. I shot that fellow, and I want the reward. You didn't bury Larson? I was devoid of a shovel at the time. That minor thief probably came upon the dead body and shot it in order to completely enhance a fabrication. Was there any blood about the wound? He's right, Lucas. Dead bodies don't bleed. Now, why did you take that poster off my bulletin board? Well, when I realized who he was, naturally, I lusted after the reward. Well, he might have been a little dead when I shot him. But I earned that $500 reward. I brought him in. The body on that jackass belongs to me, as surely as night follows day. Lucas. Lucas, what do you think? Well, I don't know. They're both taking liberty with the facts. Well, they're both out for the reward. Maybe I, maybe I better split it. I don't think there's anything else you can do. Yeah. Ah, Marshal, I knew that I could depend on you to uphold the principles of justice. I knew you wouldn't be swayed. Say, uh, how do you cut a notch in a snake? I brought in that killer. He was the victim of a snake to which I hold clear title. Now listen here, you two. There's a reward, and you're both going to split it and be happy about it. Or you'll share this jail cell. What do you do for a living? I am sole owner and operator of a gold mine. The Paiute Princess. Say that again. The Paiute Princess? Paiute Princess. Oh, I can see it all now. See what? A $250 sign across the landscape. The Paiute Princess. Pai... What's your full name? Pai Wright Rand. Pai Wright Rand Prop. Prop? I spell it all out, proprietor. Oh, what a sight. People will come from miles around merely to gape. The eighth wonder of the world. Oh, what a sign I will paint for you. What color paint? <laughs> much of a future in sign painting for us? You thinking of taking it up? Oh, I don't know. Mr. Quince has made $500 in one day at it. Don't be carried away by the glamour, boy. Sometimes I'll go two, even three days without making $500. What in tarnation is that? Bastille, named after a very famous French who's gal, needs one more touch. <laughs> <laughs> Sign painter should never step back to admire his work.